Hi there and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. I'm finally going to get back on with a quick change tool post. I've got a couple of lengths of silver steel for the handles. I've got a piece of sort of 16mm brass I suppose it is for the plunger so I'm going to do a little redesign on that. And I've ordered a couple of uh, black plastic knobs for the end of the handles. I ordered M8s, M6s turned up but I can work with it. So let's have a look at my thoughts on redesigning uh, a few little features. The plungers are going to change, uh, position of the handles, that sort of thing. So I'll, we'll go on to the lathe and we'll have a look and I'll discuss a few of my thoughts on where we're going to go next. Okay, so this is where we are so far. The tool block itself is done. The cam is done and the clamp down bolt is done. Now I went for 15 degree and 30 degree on the top of the handles. And I've got to think about drilling and tapping the two holes for the handles. Now, I've gone for 10mm silver steel. I thought that would be good enough. Nice and strong stuff. The 15 will sit, let me get you a view of this, on an angle drill and tapping into there. And on the 30 degrees on the top, it'll sit on that 30 degrees there, which will give me clearance between the two handles and the two knobs. So, my original handle had 70mm uh, long or oh, the one i replaced from the broken one was 70 mil long and i did find i had to sort of give it a good bump with the palm of the hand to lock it off so what i'm thinking is to go 80 mil long with the handles and then with the knob on the end of it it should be just a push forward without having to use any impact that sort of thing so what i'm going to need to do is look at where on the bolt and on the cam i need to have the tapped hole uh, on its rotation so more often than not my combine slide is set here on about 20 degrees and more often than not you're going to have your tool post square that's fairly tight down there in the mo at the moment so what I'm looking at is marking out where on this radius I want this handle to be when it's in its lock position and I'm thinking allowing a little bit I don't want it to be unlocked over there for the normal side of the tool post I want it to be unlocked somewhere around there and when it comes around the lock I want it to be sort of this sort of area so my first thought is to mark a position on here in which to mill a flat on this angle so that when I put a threaded uh, portion on the end of the silver steel it'll sit neatly on the face so looking at that I'm going to sharpie pen what I'm going to do, I've decided on a position which would be there. Now, this is only hand tight. I can't actually tighten it by, I've got no way of tightening it without gripping it with a mole grips or something. So, that's where I'd want it to end up. So, what I'm going to do is come back a little bit to allow for a bit more tightening. So, that would be where I need the flat. A flat machined on there in that position would give me the position for the handle. So what I'm going to do is set it up in the milling head, machine a flat on there, while it's all set up with the flat and the right orientation, drill and tap an 8mm hole into the locking bolt, and that will be the completion of the locking bolt, and then I'm going to make a pair of handles, M8 thread on the one end by about sort of 10, 12 mil long, 80mm um, overall of the plane shank, and then probably 10 mil or 6 mil thread on the other end, and then basically that the knob will screw onto the six mil thread on this end and the eight mil thread here will screw into the locking bolt so i'll get on with that and show you a few shots of me doing the machining and what have you okay so let's get on with it i've set the milling head up in the usual manner in the lathe i fitted the clamp bolt with the black line where i want the flat to be which is the top one with the two extra lines on uh in the flat plane facing the chuck and what I've done is used the swiveling facility, which I've built into the milling head, to set up the face I want to mill square to the headstock of the lathe. I basically brought it in against a parallel, lined it up square, clamped down the clamp bolts in my milling head, and I'm now square to the world everywhere where I want to be. Next step is going to be to put a cutter in the headstock and machine a flat on there, that finishes up 10 millimeters wide to accept what will be the 10 millimeter silver steel. Once I've machined the flat, smack in the middle of that, I'll drill and tap an eight mil hole, and that will accept the handle then, which will have an eight mil thread on the end of it. So I'll get on with that. So this is where I am now. 
I got the tool set up, uh, 10 mil milling cutter in the collet, in the headstock, job set up in my big vise in the milling head. I've marked up, blackened up the end, and what I need to do is mill a flat surface on that conical radius um, that ends up 10 mil wide. Final cut. Turned out to be just one millimeter is all the cut. I probably could have filed that, uh, but it gives me a nice flat surface in the plane where I wanted it. And the next step after this cut will be to drill and tap in that place while it's all set up in the correct plane. A uh, 6.8 hole ready for an 8mm tap. That's the final cut. And I'll give you a close-up shot of the flat. So I've set up the chuck in the headstock. Centre drill fitted, lined up the centre of the flat. I'm about 5.8 mil down from the top. Uh, so that should put the 10 mil bar below the top surface. Centered it up height-wise on the height adjuster on the uh, milling attachment. So let's drill all. Making it very gently with the centre drill. Last thing I want to do is snap it off in the hole at this stage. Yes, I know, I was using my finger to clear the swarf. It's not really sharp swarf, it's just, uh, just dust on it, as you can see. Not a problem. So that's it, centre drilled. Next, on with the drill. I think I'll do a 5 mil first, open it up as a pilot, and we'll go from there. So I'm looking at the depth of the M8 hole. Um, I'm going to need it to be at least sort of 10 mil of threads, is what I'm hoping for. Um, if I drill the hole 15 mil deep, That'll allow me at least 10 mil of 8 mil thread. So, using the DRO, up to the 5 mil drill. Let's take it very gently. 15 mil on the DRO. Allow a bit of glue on there. That's going to be I think I may be breaking into, I can feel a little bit of knocking, into the hole up the centre, which is the M10 for the stud. Well, I'll keep going. It seems all right. There's no, uh, it's not snatching or anything. So it's 12 feet. Fourteen. Let's have another little clear out. A bit more blue. Here we are, that's 15 mil. Oh, 
Okay, cylinder to 6.8. Looking like the sound of that. Just speed it up a little bit. That's better. As I say, it's going into the bore. So I'm getting an intermittent cut, but hopefully it'll hold its line as long as I take it nice and gently. Just feel it in that ball now. Breaking into the other side. It's holding, but I've got to be very, very gentle with it. Basically, cross drilling two holes. I'm nearly there now. With hindsight, probably would have been better to go straight in with a 6.8 rather than using five pilot. Anyway, that's that done. So we'll have a little chamfer on that hole just to break the edge. Looking good. That'll do me. So as I'm all set up here on centre between my spindle and the hole, I just as well tap it by putting the tap in the chuck. I've got an eight mil first tap here. And here she goes. Oh, slipping in my chuck. Okay, at least I've got it started. I'll do the rest by hand in the vice. Let's pull it back out. Jobs are good. Un. Well, here we are. That's the 10mm wide flat machined on that conical taper and an M8 hole in the spot right where I want it. So the next job, start making the handles. We want a 10mm long, 8mm thread on the end of 10mm silver steel. So we'll get on and do that. Okay, so the 10mm silver steel's up in the lathe and the chuck. Got it all set up. Let's just face the end. That's the end face, set at zero. It's fine, just touch on the 10mm diameter. Fuzzy. Okay, so I know I can take at least one mil on my DRO. Yeah, one mil will take two mil off, so I'm gonna go half a mil at a time. Half a mil. And I'll just machine back to the shoulder. Yeah, probably around ten mil. That's eight. Nine, ten, there we go. It's got a point eight on my DRO. Turn them about nine hundred RPM. That's ten. I'm gonna have a quick measure. So you've all seen this before. Spanner on the jaw. Die using the tail stock as a support to keep it true and just running the die down till I hit the shoulder. Back off from time to time. I could do this under power, I suppose, but. Uh, Again, for slow speeds, there isn't a great deal of torque in the lathe, and uh, I'm looking after my new motor, um, which did come, by the way. New motor came. We're all up and running, as you've seen, because I've been machining. Um, yeah, great service from Warco. It arrived on the Monday, as promised. Absolutely wonderful.
Okay. So there we have it. The handle is screwed into the clamp down bolt. Uh, fitted up the tool post. And the handle at the moment is 13 inches long. Which is just a spot over length I would have thought. Okay. So looking at it. It's always better when you can see something in place. I'm going to go for a length of 100mm and then the thread. Um, sort of 4 inch, 100mm, something like that. Um, and we'll see where it goes. On the ground, so I can always shorten it, but I can't put it back on again. So 108mm, something like that. Part it off, or hacksaw it off probably, at 108mm from the shoulder there. And then about 6mm of M6 thread on the end to go with the little black plastic knob. So that's the next job. So it turns out that my M6 thread on the end of there is all done. And the M8 balls that I ordered, which turned out to be M6, aren't M6, they're M5, I should have measured it. So I'll skim that 6 down to 5 and run an M5 die down it. So I skimmed the 6mm thread down to 5mm diameter. Went to get a 5mm die. I haven't got a 5mm die. Oh, here we go. Right, back to M6. So I've chopped off the 5mm. I'll now remachine it, M6 again. And I'll just drill it. Flaming balls out to M6. Why didn't I do that in the first place? Okay, let's get on with it. So I decided to make the pair of them while I was at it. The handle for the uh, uh, cam as well. So they're 100mm long. Well, one of them's 90mm long. And the other one's 100mm long. M8 one end, M6 the other. This whole project's been sort of make it up as you go along. But uh, hey-ho, let's drill these knobs out to M6 and see how we get on. I drilled and tapped the knobs. The two of them, M6. Uh, there's the ones that's going to go on the cam. Very happy with the orientation of the handle. It feels nice in the hand. It's about the right length. Tightens down nicely. I think I'm happy with that. The cam still turns, which is good news. It is actually quite tight now that it's tightened down properly. There's no appreciable movement there, but it does still rotate. I may skim maybe another three, four thou off the top of this. Anyway, that said, I can't drill and tap the hole in the cam yet for the handle because I need to know where on its rotation is the lock point when it comes up against the tool holders. The next job, I suppose, is going to be to make the plungers themselves. Uh, if you remember, I drilled and reamed these 12mm, I think it was, and I've got some half-inch brass. So I'll turn up some uh, plungers that are going to fit against the cam, probably make them over length to start with. Somewhere maybe 4mm back, I'll put an O-ring in a groove in the plunger, uh, see what o-rings I've got to do the job uh, to stop them falling out you know during use so yeah that's the next job make some plungers turns out the brass that I had in stock wasn't half inch it was 12 mil face the end put a little radius on it bit of a polish and it fits in the holes nicely so now I'm going to put a groove in the 12 mil plunger uh, my parting tool is two and a half mil wide and my rubber o-ring is two mil in section so that should be fine and i'm going to put it in i've got an o-ring that's 12 mil in diameter so if i go just below uh the the diameter of the o-ring with my depth of parting groove so that the o-ring is just slightly proud of the 12 mil when it's fitted we should be somewhere near and i'll try it so scratch what i said earlier on i was saying that it was 12 mil brass believing that I'd ream the holes in the block to 12 mil. As it was, I did ream them half inch. Hence why just a polish on this half inch stock and it fitted, you know, I think it measures up at 12.65 mil as opposed to 12.7 half inch and it fits in the hole nicely. So I've deepened the groove. Glad it didn't go too far. Um, and it now measures across the rubber O-ring actually measures up at 12.75. So just to try it in the hole. I've got the block here. There you are. And it fits in over the O-ring. And it's a fairly snug fit. So those plungers, with a bit of lube in there, are not going to fall out during use. So happy days. Uh, cut that off to length. I'm going to leave it a couple of mil over length. I can face it down at a later date. Want you know, to set the cam distance and all the rest of it. So I'll make two of those and away to go. I fitted the plunger in the top, as you can see, just straight after parting off. I've left it over length. I've put the cam in and set the cam so that the high point of the cam is directly opposite the plunger. So this plunger is now at its lowest point. As a starter, I'm going to set it so that that lowest point is flush with the block. 
Um, as I said, about 0.3 is the travel I'd be thinking I'll probably need because obviously it's not going to be a great tight uh, tight fit on the top here, the um, tool holder. So I'm going to skim this down now, measure this step uh, here to here and skim it flush back in the lathe. I'll measure the step and then take that much off, put a little chamfer on it and that'll be that one done. So I've fitted the tool post up. It's all there with the plungers in position. The plungers, I've got the cam at the lowest point. If I push the plunger right back, it's sitting on the rubber a bit. You can see the reading is, hang on, it will go to zero. I'm trying to film this. It's about two thou up. Let's come back a touch. There we are, the reading zero on the clock. If I rotate the cam around 180 degrees, You'll see the clock rising to the highest point. You're getting about 37 and a half thou. Um, so with a bit of clearance that's in there, that's my one mil travel. And I'm one mil proud when it's right up. Now the interesting thing, which I wasn't expecting, so I then take it away again. Due to the vacuum inside, and there being an O-ring fitted, it drops back. Not all the way back in. Um, but certainly drops back half a mil or so. So yeah, I wasn't expecting that. So the other plunger does exactly the same. So other than drilling and tapping the hole in the cam to take the cam handle, the tool post itself is finished. But I think what I'll do next is make up a tool holder, maybe a dummy one out of aluminium or something like that, or maybe a bit of inch square steel, just a dummy tool holder. Maybe one that'll come in as a clock holder at a later date, something like that. Machine one up so I can get the dimensions I want and then we can think about putting the handle in the cam to make it lock out correctly. So once I've got the dimensions I want on the uh, tool holder, you know, the dummy or sacrificial one that will probably end up being a DTI uh, holder, something like that. Once I've machined one of those, I can then set the cam position and we're well on our way to completing this project. So I've been thinking... Dangerous, I know. But I came up the house, had a cup of coffee, and I've been thinking. So my tool post sits on the compound slide in this orientation. And when the handle is locked, it locks the tool post down. It's in this orientation here, in line with this diagonal. So I'll pull that out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, for the front mounted tool holder, I'd like it to lock. This is the highest point. I'd like it to lock sort of 15 degrees before the highest point. So in this sort of orientation. And I'd like the handle to be down here where the letter B is. Out of the way of this handle when this handle's locked. Okay, let's pull that back out. And the unlock position I would imagine would be if I move it around somewhere like there. And again, in the same idea, if the handle were at C... It would be unlocked somewhere around this position. And when the high point comes up, oh sorry, it would be locked around this position where C lines up with A and unlocked at about that position. And I can adjust the actual position by varying the length of the two plunger pins. So there's no reason why I can't drill and tap the cam handle at point C and then purely adjust the length of the two pins to get the actual position defined. So I'm hoping for this sort of area here when it's locked to lock the front tool post so that the handle's out of the way and back pointing towards operator side or away from the lathe when the normal use tool post is in position. So my next step is actually going to be to drill and tap the M8 hole in this cam at position C.